Okay, what we'd like to do here is um, I'm going to try another method uh, called resolving uh, forces into components. I think this is my preferred method. I think this is the most versatile and the easiest one to use for the most uh, types of problems. I'm going to recreate a sketch of my free body diagram. So here's my, there's my hitch point, and I'm going to draw a vector. Not very straight, but this is supposed to represent my 24,000. Vec Newton vector, 24,000 Newtons. And that's the pickup. And then 120 degrees from that, I have this 6200 Newton uh, vector. That's the snowmobile. And then from there, 120 degrees between the two of them, I've got the 5,000 Newton force from the ATV. So all of these angles are 120 degrees in all cases and um, the vectors are shown there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to impose a set of coordinate axes on here and I'm going to I'm going to make coordinate axes that just make sense to me. Like for example the biggest vector here is the pickup so I'm just going to make a, an axis that goes through the direction of the pickup and I'm going to just call that let's let's call it just X and then horizontal I mean perpendicular to that in the vertical going right through the hitch point, because that's convenient, I'm going to impose another axis called Y. And So what I want to do is I'm going to resolve everything into vectors that are right on axis. Well, the reason I chose X here is because this one's already on axis, and it's the biggest one. Okay, now I have to separate the 6200 Newton force into one that goes this way and one that goes this way. That's my objective here. I'm going to go like that and then up like that and replace that vector with those two because they're on axis and then I'm going to do the same thing with the 5000 Newton vector and I go this way and this way and I'll replace that 5000 Newton vector with those two vectors so let's blow that up a little bit and take a look at those those two vectors now if I take my 6200 Newton force that's going up in that direction I know that if this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis I know that this angle here is 180 minus the 120 that it was from the x-axis well that leaves me with 60 degrees so I've got this right triangle thing here so this vector here well that's going to be whatever this Newton, this vector is which was 6200 Newtons times the cosine, because this side is adjacent to the 60 degree angle, the cosine of 60 degrees. And the component that goes in the y-axis here, well that's going to be 6200 newtons times the sine of 60 degrees, because it's opposite the 60 degree angle. I can do a similar analysis with the 5000 newton vector. Here's my axis system, there's my 5,000 Newton vector. This component, well, this is 60 degrees. Everything's symmetrical here, which is nice. This is 60 degrees, so this is going to be 5,000 Newtons times cosine of 60 degrees. And this component, the one that's on the y-axis, well, that's going to be 5,000 Newtons times the sine of 60 degrees because it's opposite the 60 degree opposite sine adjacent is cosine so now if I kind of set this up with with X the pickup direction being positive on X axis here's what I get on the X axis I've got the 24,000 Newtons minus because it's going the other way 6200 newtons <clears throat> times the cosine of 60 degrees and then I have the component in the x-axis from the 5000 newton vector from the from the ATV so that's also a minus because it's pointing opposite the pickup and that'd be 5000 newtons times the sine I'm sorry not sine minus 5,000 newtons times the cosine of, again, 60 degrees. 
Well, I can do some calculations here and figure out what that is. And 18,400 newtons. It's not going backwards, actually it's going forward. With the two components that go backwards, 24,000 reduces down to 18,000 newtons. Positive, that's what's in the x-axis. Here's what's in the y-axis. Um, the pickup provides nothing in the y-axis. The 60 degree angle on the 6200 newton does. So that I got this component and I got this component. If I call this positive going up on the y-axis, well then the 6200 times the sine of 60 is positive, but 5000 newtons times the sine of 60 is negative. So I'll sum these up. 6200 sine 60 minus 5000 sine 60. Here's what I come up with. This ends up still being positive. It's 1039 newtons. Okay, so what does that mean about our result? Well, I can just use Pythagorean theorem because x and y are perpendicular to each other, and I got a right angle here. So here's what my x component of my result is. It's 18,400 newtons. My y component, again, it's positive, so I'm going in a positive y direction. Well, that's 1,039 newtons. So my resultant, well, that's the hypotenuse of this triangle. Well, that's easy to find. Uh, R here, the result, it's just the square root of 18,400 newtons squared plus 1,039 newtons squared. The square root of that's going to be the result. Well, I'll calculate it. The unit's going to be newtons because it's a square root of square newtons. Okay, things haven't changed a whole lot because this is so much bigger than this. It's 18,429 newtons. That's the magnitude of my result. What's the direction? Well, if I measure this angle theta, I'm not going to measure it, I'm going to determine it, but it goes opposite over adjacent is tangent. So the inverse tangent of opposite, which is 1,039 newtons, over the adjacent, which is 18,400 newtons, well, that should give me what the value of theta is. So I'll calculate that, and it turns out to be 3.23 degrees. So I can say that the resultant here of these three objects is, or these three forces, is 18,429 newtons at 3.23 degrees towards the 